What's going on everybody? I'm DJ Song from Astralis Star Six, and in today's video we're going to be going over Mrs. Float Like a Butterfly, Steam Like a Bee Herself, Nomad. So in today's video I'm going to be going over her loadout, her role in game, how to play her, and actually how to do one push which is pretty much standard in the game on one map in particular. So be sure to stick around for those and also if you stick around to the end of the video I'm going to be playing in-game examples of me playing Nomad and Ranked. I can't just talk about it, I gotta be about it too. So be sure to stick around to the end of the video to see those in-game examples and learn how to play it even more excessively. But it's time for the question of the day. So my question of the day for you guys, should you be able to just buy anything from the event packs instead of just getting the packs themselves? I see a lot of people are hype about the snowball event that just came in the siege. And I'm looking at the collection like, wow, I would like a lot of this stuff, but I would just be able to just buy it all right instead of me having to buy packs and hoping that I get what I want, you know? So do y'all think you should be able to just buy individual items from each event pack? Let me know in the comment section down below. But that's enough of me rambling for the intro. We gonna get straight into the guide. Let's do it, baby. Yeah. All right, so now we're gonna go into a little bit about her loadout. So in her loadout, she has the AK-74M and also the ARX-200. Now, me personally, when I play Siege, I don't really like the AK because, I don't know, the recoil just seems a little bit weird to me. It might be a good gun for you, so just be sure, you know, take this in the T-Hunt a little bit and try to control it. But the ARX for me is a lot more stable, if that makes sense. So, this is definitely the gun that I run. now. It has a 2.0 scope and a 2.5 scope. It also has hollow reflexes and red dots. I don't run any of the red dot hollows or reflexes when I'm on attack. I usually run a 1.5 scope, but she doesn't have that on the ARX. So the closest thing to that is the 2.0. It does pretty good close and mid range in all honesty, but this is just me playing it individually. So, I mean, it feels good overall to you. So I would definitely try this scope first before the other ones. On the barrels, as y'all know, if you watch the other videos, flash harders are king in Siege. If you put a compensator on, the recoil is going to go higher. And muzzle break is pretty much just for single shot weapons. So slap flash harder on there, your recoil will definitely be easier to control. She doesn't have a vertical grip. So this is just pretty much it for this gun. As I said before in other videos, I don't run a laser because... If I'm holding an angle or just going around the map, you know, be, trying to be sneaky sometimes, they will, they'll see the laser and me just aiming at the wall if I were to put this on. So I don't run lasers on any of my guns. That's pretty much it for the primary. Now her secondary, if you want to style on people, you got the .44 Magnum right here, the semi-auto with the crazy scope on it. Now you can run this. It's very viable. It's very satisfying when you get those taps and you tap the people's heads. I understand that. But me, you know, I, I'm aimingly challenged. Like, I can't, I can't, I can't aim all that good. So I need to go ahead and run the PRB-92. This is me. It's more forgiving if I run this gun. So not much to talk about here. You're able to slap a laser on that too. But I already went over that. And you just slap a muzzle break on here. Suppressors will down the damage. So I don't really run those either. Muzzle break, single shot pistol. Pretty much all in for the secondaries. And for her gadgets, she has stun grenades and recharges. Now, if you want to be aggressive and you're going to be the one that's pushing, you can run the stun grenades and it'll be easier for you to get frags. But if you're going in for a more tactical advantage, like I'm actually going to use this in one of the examples a little bit later in the video. But if you're going in and trying to like get a more of a tactical advantage over the defenders and there's a lot of soft hatches or anything like that you want to blow open, definitely run the recharges. So that way you could be a one woman record crew with Nomad. Like you won't even need a sledge or a buck. You can break whatever you need to break by yourself if you run a breach charger. So that's pretty much it for her loadout. Now I'm going to get into a little bit about what her role is when you're playing her. In this game, we all know and love. So let's move on. Yay. So now we're going to talk about a little bit about Nomad's role. Nomad's role is pretty much the flank watch and that's pretty much going to be your setup. What I mean by that is setting up air jabs so that the enemy defenders will have a harder time taking aggressive fights against the attackers. This could be things like runouts, which Consulate is notorious for. So if you want an easier time going against the attackers, banning Nomad might be the play when you're playing that map. And running impacts to take care of any claymores they might have in place of areas that should have air jabs on them. And destroying the claymores and running out will make it easier on you as a defender with taking those aggressive fights because 
a lot of people don't tend to run claymores in all honesty at least when i'm playing ranked so you might have maybe one or two claymores to deal with but that's better than three air jabs in places that you don't know where they might be at so that's just a little tip for y'all banning nomad on maps like consulate could get you easy runouts and easy picks when you're going against an attacker so just keep that in mind but going back to nomad so countering aggressive runouts countering rotations making it harder for them to rotate and flank watch is basically what nomad's job is when the enemy gets hit by the air jab they're pretty much defenseless until they get up so use this chance to get an easy pick as well and also another thing that's crucial when playing nomad is drone setup i say this a lot of times when i'm going overseas stuff drone setup is crucial because running nomad and placing three air jabs already cuts off three areas that the enemy can rotate to and then you add two drones to the mix and now you have five areas of the map that are covered with two providing visual intel which is your two drones and three providing audio intel if someone gets hit by it those are your three air jabs so make sure you're being smart about where to place your drones the intel that you're getting from them and you will start to see results playing this operator that's pretty much it for her role now i'm going to move on to how to play her so nomad is good on maps that favor rotations these would be maps like cafe and coastline for two examples and also maps that favor aggressive runouts like clubhouse garage they can run out stock room things like that or the consulate runouts like i just spoke about briefly when talking about nomad's role before this when playing cafe i use this example when going over buck and sledge as well vertical play is king on maps like cafe especially when the team goes the kitchen site on defense so here's what you would do in that scenario you and sledge or buck would be taking the upstairs or if you're solo queue and want to get the job done yourself you could just run breaches she has breaches in her loadout and open the floor that way you know that would be just if you're a solo queue warrior i know a lot of people don't have you know a lot of people to play with so they're constantly playing siege by themselves nomad is a one woman wrecking crew trust and believe when i say that and i'm gonna get into a little bit about that as well but taking the mining and train areas is the most crucial goal here so droning the second floor to make sure it's clear before hopping in you have to do that because if you don't do that and you get picked the flanks are just wide open and it's a lot harder for your team to get things done efficiently because they're always worried about getting ran up on from the flank and it's like if you play valorant and somebody comes from the flank undetected and the whole team was looking at flank watch was usually like a killjoy like where is the turret the turret should have seen them it's the same thing in siege so your primary job is just making sure the flanks are secure for your team so once you drone the second floor and it's clear you hop in and put air jabs on white stairs red stairs and brown stairs which is the stairs that would be in pillar area so you now have all three areas covered if the enemy tries to rotate up while you're doing reconstruction on the floor. So now we're going to make our way to mining and train. So now take your breach charges to the floor and open it up, make it harder for the defenders to play safe in sight. Once that's done, you can also shoot stuff off the wall for your breacher to open the walls and then begin to take sight and go for a plan. See, that's pretty much it. That's usually how a push goes when playing Nomad and it's very efficient by saving time. If you didn't play Nomad in this scenario, you would have to take the third floor on Cafe pick any roamers drone it more efficiently and all while you're droning it will be running down time on the clock so the longer you spend droning areas and just running around and not knowing what to do the more time the defenders will have to hold the site when it really gets down to the nitty gritty and it's crunch time so eating the clock is a tactic in siege so the more time you have to push the site in the end the better off you'll be with getting the plant down and securing the win but that's pretty much it on how to play her. I hope you guys got all of that. I can't wait to see you guys try it out in game. Usually people try out the stuff that I say in videos and come back to the comment section like, hey, this worked or hey, this didn't work. So if you try playing Nomad and you do a push like this, let me know how it worked in the comment section down below. I'm definitely going to be looking out for it. But now, since you stayed to the end of the video, I'm going to roll some examples of me playing Nomad in rank. And be sure to catch this clutch. You won't going to miss it. I went a little bit crazy, y'all. I'm not, I'm not going I'm not going to front. It's a little, it got a little crazy. That might have been my best game in Siege to date. But, you know, I'm going to be quiet. I'm going to let the clips play. And I'm going to return when these are over with. I almost died. Who's killed? It's two, it's two on site and one on study side. If you guys push site now, y'all can overwhelm them probably. One on site by the coffee table pushing by the um he's about a he's about a jukebox about a jukebox see, okay. okay. behind the table behind the table he's peeking the rotate nice you killed the though one here one here he's pushing he's pushing towards the red 
Push it towards you. Um, no man. He, he's holding. He's holding. Just holding. He's here. I'm ping. He's still there. Still there. I'm ping. I'm ping. Holding the door. Holding the door. Holding the door. Fox. Fox. Coming back. Coming back. He's coming to my door. He's going. He's going. He's going. I'm not gonna turn the drone. No, he's off. He's off. He's going back. He's peeking to rotate by Astro. He's peeking Astro. He's on. He's on the table. He's on the table. Middle of the room. Middle of the room. Just on the middle of the room. Middle of the room. He's still in the middle of the room. Still in the middle. He's about to get air jabbed soon, but I think maybe. Middle of the room. He just got air jabbed. Nice, nice, nice. I can try and plant. No, no, no idea what the last one. Good job with the carry, DJ. He got hit by that. Oh no, oh no, oh no, oh no. Don't be good, don't be good, don't be good. Nice. Good job. Good job. <sighs> I'm holding, man. I think I hear one near me, or is he in study? How about time? The ops they have, only one we gotta go. Huh? Can I get the wall? Castle might be in there. Why well, is it by main? By main, by main. I got the wall castle. Oh, I got the wall castle. Can I plant? Can somebody hold him while I plant? Yeah, 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 I'm holding, I'm holding. Bro, he's on the he peaked me. Probably right at the room oh, by oh. the pool table. He got me too. Bro, bro, you didn't give a fuck. I thought he was still on bar. He he was when he peaked me. Yeah, that's probably the best spot right there. You're better. Jeez, that man. Jeez, it's at three. <sighs> yeah, when he peeked me, he was still by bar. He was behind. Okay, okay. He killed me. 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 All right, so that's all I have for you guys today. That's a little bit about how to play Nomad. Hopefully you liked and enjoyed the video. And if you did, be sure to leave a like and subscribe to the Astral Star 6 channel. We would greatly appreciate it. And also, go ahead and head over there and see what type of videos we have for you. There's a lot of guys, a lot of different types of content on the channel. So be sure to check that out. And also, if you want to see more from me, go ahead and head over to my channel. See what I have for you over there. I'll pop my name on screen right now, but all of my socials are at DJSon, the same as my YouTube, everything, YouTube, Twitch, Twitter, all of that, Instagram, everything, DJSon. So go ahead and drop a follow or sub there. I would greatly appreciate it. That's enough of me rambling for the outro this time. Astralis, thank you for having me, and I will catch y'all next time. Y'all gonna be great. Good luck on your rent games. Have a good one. Peace.